we're going to discuss um, selling your chametz. Start a little bit on Shabbos, but the halacha is as follows: that um, chametz that belongs to a guy that's in your rishus. Chametz that belongs to a guy that's in your property. Let's get a little background first. Chometz that belongs to a guy that's in your rishus is uh, is that is that your chometz? Chometz that belongs, you mentioned this previous weeks. Chometz belongs to a Jew that's in your rishus. You have to destroy. You're a chiyav to get rid of it. A kol, chayav levarai. If there's if someone else has any chametz belongs to him that's in your property, on chametz, on Pesach you have to get rid of it. So uh, if you, you could sell it, you could sell it, you could become a shliach him to sell it, or uh, he could sell it, uh, but you can't uh, leave it in your property. So uh, you have to get rid of it. Even if it doesn't belong to you, it belongs to him. But chametz of a guy that's in your rishos, is a chametz of a guy, it's not mine. So technically it's okay, you can so leave it there. It's nothing to do with Arvis. Any, uh, it's, it's, it's a mitzvah in every class, so not to have any. The going holds, the going holds that uh, you have to get rid of it. It comes down here, the Shabu, the going, and the. Uh, Is that not stealing or something? But if it's his, you to destroy it. No, it, and when it comes to sixth hour, it's going to be worth nothing. It becomes Asabahana and it becomes uh, uh, t- 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 out of your Rishos. It doesn't belong to the Yid either after the time. So when it's gone. If he wants to uh, keep it, he has to uh, he has to sell it or uh, do something with it, but he can't leave it around. So if it's in my rishos, uh, I have to I can get rid of it. It's a guy's thing, so you have to put a mechitza asoya. You have to put a, a wall, tent fachim, between you and the chametz. Because even though a guy is not my chametz, there's no problem of by your by your matzah, it's not my chametz, it's his chametz. But uh, you're not supposed to have any chametz in your domain that you could come and take it. So the rochas, you have to have a mechitza asara. You have to have a mechitza asara, ten tefachim high, but this high, a wall between you and the chametz. As if you have a guy's chametz in your rishos. Now, that's if the guy, it's the guy's chametz in your rishos. But if it was your chametz and you sold it, <coughs> like now, so we're more machmer on that, because um, your chametz that you sell, we, uh, we, we your, your chametz that we sell, we, uh, we're afraid that you're used to it, you know, it's yours. So it's not enough of mechitza asara. It has to be out of your rishos. It literally has to be out of your rishos. And for this reason, for one of other reasons also, but for this reason, when we sell the chametz, we rent out the place that the chametz is on. Because if the chametz is in your rishos, then uh, that, that's not sufficient. How is it possible if, if, if you have, for instance, people that put a, ref- a freezer, for instance, and half of it's coming, they close it up, they, they, they cover it up, and half of it's it... not recommended. It's not recommended thing to do, to put in, uh, keep it in the freezer, because uh, you have to have mechitza asara. You have to have mechitza asara, and you have to rent it. Now, apart renting it, you can maybe do. You know, if you if you do the whole freezer, you keep one freezer and one freezer, that's fine. You rent that space under the freezer, you close off the freezer, the doors of the freezer is a mechitza asara. Thank you. The doors of the mechi- the doors of the fridge is a mechitza asara, and that's that's 100% uh, valid. But if you're going to quarter off a part of your refrigerator or part of your freezer in order to leave the chametz, it's not lechat chilu. Now, if you don't have another choice, the uh, you know some, uh, sometimes they're not fully in control the situation. So if you have another choice, there's a um a is uh, is uh, not so high. You could um forty inches, maybe a little less. So you could uh, cut off half the half the freezer, you know, and put a dividing in there and quarter it off. And uh, and that would be uh, sufficient. And you use the other half. It's definitely not Khatila and the fridge also, you know, you cut off the part and uh, use it. It's not, it's not the best way to do things. The best way to do things should be in a separate place. If you, you don't have your own freezer, find someone else that has a freezer that's selling the chametz and, and leave it there.
So that's, uh, yeah, that's a good question. A lot of people come up with this question. It's unfortunate because there's no real, it's not a l'chatchilu de ka'itza to leave it in your own uh, fridge, freezer. <coughs> if you have a separate second freezer, it's the best thing. If you have only one, so you can use half, close off the other half, you have to close it off, you know, put a, st a stop in between, put a sign on it, you remember it's comments, and put a, a blockage, and it should be quartered off in a way where it's like in its own uh, drawer, so to say, it's in its own way of thing. The same thing is with cupboards. Cupboards are uh, could be considered as a mechitza. So you close off the cupboards. You have real chametz in there. So it's a, the, the best way should be a proper cupboard. That's ten tefachim high. You know, usually they are, but a uh, small little drawer. Just one drawer is closed. If it's not real chametz, you know, it's just chametz kalim or uh, you know, your, the drawer you keep your uh, your uh, uh, tablecloths in and stuff. Or, uh, so that's a chametz. You don't even have to sell that. <laughs> Yeah, it's not something you're going to come to eat. But okay, you sell it, close off the drawer, you don't really want to clean it, it's fine. But if you're going to have a real live piece of uh, bread in there, or uh, cookies or something, which is real chametz, so that should be kept in a place which has a divider. So that's one reason we uh, sell the, uh, we rent or sell the spot underneath the chametz, because it's not sufficient in halacha to, ha to have a guy's chametz in your rishos, that if it was once yours and you sold it, it has to be out of your domain. And in order to get it out of your domain, uh, you need to uh, rent a place underneath. But he have it if it wasn't done? It's not chametz shovel. You see, there's two issues by Pesach. There's one issue not to be owned by you all, which is a bigger issue. But the whole hilchus of Mechilis Chomets is brought down on the halacha of Chomets Sha'avel of a Pesach. Chomets that passed by Pesach and you want to use it after Pesach. So that's only Yisad Rabbanan. And therefore, for that we'll see we're more lenient in many cases. So for Chomets Sha'avel of a Pesach, uh, even if it wasn't done 100% properly, it was still in your wishes, but if the rice was sold and it belongs to the guy, you know, so that's fine. You could eat it after Pesach. It's relevant for, let's say, stores or other things, which, you know, they're not 100% uh, doing the right thing, but uh, at the end of the day, the question is whether you could eat it after Pesach, if they sold it, even though maybe they were still uh, cheating on Pesach and so and do other things, but if they sold the chametz, it could be insufficient for the din to Rabbonim, the chametz shall have a lot of Pesach. But the din of the Raisa, or Bali Rabbi Matzah, we try to get out, you know, to try to get the hummus out of your shus in the real way. So you have, I'm sorry, I missed out a little bit. So with, as far as the goy's hummus is concerned, it's in your possession. Uh, are you obligated to sell it if it's in your possession? So if I have, uh, so again, okay, so good question. Yeah. So if I have a goy's uh, hummus in my possession, am I obligated to sell it? Hmm. So that's a good question. Technically not, it belongs to the guy. I just have to block it off. But if I have a chrys on it, if I have responsibility, this is a very important thing to remember because it comes again, we'll see soon. If I have responsibility on it, which is halacha, and if I have responsibility on the chametz, so then, um, <coughs> then it could be it's as if I own it. So if I have no responsibility on it at all, that's better. If I have no responsibility on it, and how do we define responsibility? Yeah. So it's machloikus. How you define responsibility? So it says over here, any Yehudi shehifket chemtz by Yisrael Yisrael, a guy that left his chemtz by Yid, muchay vachloyusim b'gnev vaveda, if it gets stolen, what's lost, chay vavari has to has to destroy it. Even if it's not on his house, if he has responsibility, he has to destroy it. The Ramah says, if Yeshua, I'm sorry, the Machabe says, afilu. Even if you don't have, even shemachina, maybe you have to get rid of it. Even if you're watching it for free. And then he says, But if you know that the guy is a strong guy, and he'll uh, force you to pay if it gets lost, so even if but you're going to have to pay for it, so then you have to destroy it. So here we have Machoikas. If you're not Chayiv on Geneva Vaveda, you don't have a proper Achrayis on it, whether you have to destroy it. So again, the Allah, we follow the stricter opinion. If you're watching a great thing and you're responsible, even like a Shemachinam, for Shia, you should get rid of it or sell it. You know. But if 
uh, you didn't, you could rely on the leaning to p- opinion for after Pesach, it doesn't have a dinner of trouble or Pesach. What do people do in the industry? I mean, if uh, you know you have a warehouse of food, you don't own the company, you know, you're working there. So it could, even if you're not, I guess it would depend obviously if you own the property or not. Yeah. But if you own it, if it's not, you don't own it, there's nothing to do with you. It right, really is. Right. So ownership would be the yeah, issue. Right? Of course, if you owned it, that could get complicated. Yeah. If you own it and the guy is renting the space that he's using. Right. If you own the warehouse and he's renting the space, so okay, he's renting the space. As long as you don't yeah. have any responsibility on it, he's renting the space. If he's not renting the space, he's just using your, you're storing it for him. So then you have some sort of responsibility. You should sell it. Now it's interesting that you brought it up here. And some shtarmachiyas don't have it. The one I have here, we put in to the selling. Okay, it depends who you're selling for. You know, if you're selling for a whole city of Toronto, and uh, you're going to have people with different kinds of businesses in it. So we put in here, we put in here that uh, that normally you'll see when we go through the shtarmachiyah is the guy buys from you the chametz, he rents from you the property, so the guy's giving you money. In other words, if you give him a, some, some cash and he uses it, he buys, we'll see soon, he rents the property and he buys the, he buys the chametz, but um, we'll see how we do it soon. But at one point we put in here that we pay the guy actually. Because let's say I have a chrayis on the guy's chametz, so I want him to take over the responsibility. Let's say I have a chrayis, I have a warehouse. I have a chrayis on, on chametz. I'm responsible for chametz, so I'm going to be over. So it doesn't help for me to sell anything to the guy. What I need to do is resolve my responsibility and put it on the guy, put it on him. So I have to actually pay him to take responsibility. So many people put that into the star. It's in here, over here. So to find it here. So is it here? So you're paying him to do something? Yeah, I'm paying him to take over for those eight days the, uh, the responsibility. And then he gives you, in return, he, get, he, he buys, he, he gives you a deposit down. So keep a line here in the coin and you call it in the Christ and you pay him for it. Shalom to you, who is that? Actually, last year we was here, we doing the Mechira together, so I put that into the thing. You know, it depends on what you have. It depends what you have in the, in the, in the, what people are selling, but um, it's not included in every Shtar Mechira, but it's an important thing because there's no way to get out of it unless you pay the guy. He can't pay you to accept responsibility. It doesn't make sense. You have to pay him to accept responsibility. So that's put in because there are people, different businesses, if you have commodities and different things which uh, deal in chametz and you have responsibility. So uh, if that you own the building that has chametz and you have responsibility, different things are in it. So we put it into the shtar Is that common throughout Toronto? Is the same same documents used throughout? Um, so you have your own, and well, each one has their own. Like with Moshe Rice and Shul, which I didn't bring in Europe, every Rav wrote their own. Uh, what they had from their Kabbalah from generations, uh, but in, in uh, different places, different ways. So this star is actually from Rabbi Miller, Rabbi Felder, and uh, they sell the Chomets, the Palm, they all use the star. Um, I'm not sure what the Rav here uses. <coughs> the Vail had a different one based on um, something from New York, he had a different star. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, there's, there are different Nuskhais of stars, which we'll see, but um, again, they were written throughout the years, you know, to accommodate different, uh, like here, horses and uh, birds aren't as megaya, unless you have a livestock farm. And also the things that were taken out of many stores and uh, put in the corner. Uh, and stocks and stuff, you know, mm-hmm. an, array, an array of stocks, and it could be in a company. Uh, could be in a company, so it's a question if you own. Yeah, it's a question of what you, uh, what your share is. What if you own, if you have enough shares in the company to, uh, but we, we include, everything's included in there. But why does it make a difference? If I own one share, I still own it. No, you don't really have uh, control on the company. You no, don't no, really you own don't control, but you own. It's, it's just all shy of what you own. If you own the company, you just own the stock in the company. The question is how logically how you look at it, mm-hmm. if you really own it. And if you have rave, uh, rave, if you have rave shares or you're on the board or you have, you have control of it, then it's more. You know, we stick to, we stick in different things in here. Oh, we'll get to, we'll get to how you sell. But uh, once you brought up a chrys, I thought I'd mentioned that, that we put that in, 
to the start because if you have responsibility on the chametz, even if it's not yours, it's a problem. Okay, so that's why it's one reason we sell chametz. Another reason we sell chametz is because um, chametz yedua has a machloek as whether you can be mavat or If you know you have chametz, if you know you have chametz, chametz she'ein yedua, you could be mavat if you what find type, it on, what kind of chametz is that? Not chametz that you don't know about, you can mm-hmm. be mavatel, and then you, uh, if you find it on Pesach, it's bottle, you know, so you get rid of it anyways, but it's bottle, you get rid of it because you keep a dika, you don't want to lying around the house, you might come to eat it, but the mavatel, it bittel takes care of having chametz being over by you or by your mother. So yeah. So if you find it on Pesach by accident, how do you dispose of it? Do you have to burn it then or you just throw it out? Yeah, so that's a question how you do it. Really, you have to burn it, but uh, on Pesach, we don't burn it, so you flush down the toilet. You shouldn't touch it. You should use it when you move something else. It could be its muksa. On the first day of Pesach, it could be its muksa. But the truth is, all the chamas we were mavatal, we sold. <laughs> it's not really yours, anyways. But the achsachim badiki, now I have it around. So you cut for a clear on it. On Yom Tif, you cut for a clear on it. You cover it so you shouldn't see it. And after Yom Tif, you could just burn it. Well, you can flush it down. So it's the problem when, when these advertising companies put in the post, they, 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 you know... You have to have a mind not to no, be kind just, of those just, stuff. Just, yeah. just some place that they give you the Cheerios, you know? Yeah, yeah. Right. Yes, yeah, so you have to have a mind not to be kind of it. Fantastic. You have to mind that you just shouldn't be kind of it. You don't, you, want, you don't want to acquire anything hummus that's coming into your property. And then uh, you get rid of it for the first possible moment. Don't pick it up because you don't want to be kind of it. Just, I guess you have to get, pick it up to be burned, it, but, uh, you know... Have a mind not to acquire it, and uh, okay. So, uh, so how much you do a If something comes into the mailbox, you just leave it in the mailbox, so you don't touch it, you don't deal with it. Well, if it's uh, on, on Pesach itself, but if yeah. it's on Chalamoid, you should get rid of it. Should get rid of it, yeah. So, what if you have a boy that loses you? You ask them to get rid of it. Yeah, can't give it to them. You should get rid of it. They should burn it. You ask them to. So they well, you could burn it. Oh, on Pesach itself, he's saying to us to go to burn it. You can ask him to flush it down. Actually, uh, receiving something like Shall what Ed is so. what Ed's talking about, like a box of Cheerios, for example, it really comes in a mailbox, which is not in your house. Is that mailbox your property? These are these boxes standing on the street. It's not your house, then maybe not. But if it's touching, if it's in your uh, owner's property, it is your property. It's on your property. It is your property. The mailbox? I don't Rent know. Rent it, uh, maybe. Some people have it on the property. The whole yard. No, no, I'm talking the, the mailbox. He's talking you know, about the, here. The, the standing the boxes? Outside, you mean? Yeah. 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 Okay, I just want to get moving because we won't get too far here. So, chametz you do chametz that you know you have, because uh, a big question is showing whether you could be mavatel it, and if you can't be mavatel it, you could be over by your by your on it. So uh, we sell. That's another reason why we sell chametz because you, you, you might have chametz that you know about that uh, you couldn't get rid of. You, know, you might have properties elsewhere that you have chametz and it's hard to get rid of. So we sell we sell the chametz. The other reason to sell the chametz. You say chametz that I know about something. Well, we're showing them. If you could get, if so you could, you like. We have is a, is a few yeah, yeah. We cover all angles. We can cover everything. Yeah. The first nusach is what I don't know about till I do the yeah. Then yeah, yeah, yeah. So shall we show them? So it covers everything. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, yeah, but yeah, yeah. Maybe we should hold. You could be mavatel chametz you do it. But uh, some shall only can. So, so now, when we sell it, the problem is we all learned here Chayish and Mishpat. We learned the Shir. We covered cover how you kind of go is kind of Yiddish kind of. There's a big issue how you sell chametz. What's the issue? How do you sell chametz? You know, you'd be familiar with the concepts. How do you sell chametz? Because there's two kinyanim that work midaraisa. Kesef and Meshicha. Now, Midaraisa, we pass in what's coined by Yid, could be he's not coined by a guy. So we owe Kesef is coined Midaraisa by Yid. So according to Roy Rishonim, it could be Kesef is not coined by a guy. A guy cannot be coined Midaraisa by Kesef with cash. So he has to be coined with Mashiach. Now that's very good if I have my <coughs> bottle of schnapps and I have my uh, bread 
and I have cleaned my whole house, and now I just have my box of chametz. So I go to my neighbor, the guy, and I say, please, take my chametz. And he's moshechet, and he does mashicha, and he's carrying the chametz. But today, we sell it to the rabbi. He's definitely not taking the guy to everybody's house to be moshech all the chametz. So uh, you can't be kind of with mashicha. So the question is, what can you work? Again, you don't want to be over Medaraisha and Bali Rab Bali Matzah. So how do we get the Chametz to be sold Medaraisha? So we do Kesef, but Kesef may be only works for Rabbon. It's all Shiloh. The Kinyan Rabbon and Mahanim Deraisa. For a Binnacle Kinyan works for a, uh, for a, on a Torah level. So, uh, so we do Kesef, but it's not sufficient. So we throw in many other Kinyanim. We throw in many other Kinyanim. The uh, Meshavur brings it down here. He says, what can it work? Since there has been a poiskim, some say kesef works, and some say it can be kind of kesef, only mashicha, or hagba, which obviously you can't do. So, we have another few. Agav. Agav karka means if you sell a guy land, through the acquire, let's say I sell you a piece of land. So with the acquiring of the land, you can acquire all the things, metatlum, even if it's not on the land. In other words, if I'm selling your land and I have a boat somewhere, so with the acquiring, acquiring the land, you could acquire the boat. It's called Kenyan Agav Karka. Along with the ground, with the, with the land, you acquire other things. So there's a Kenyan Agav Karka, the Kenyan Chatzer, what's in the land that guy can be kind of with his property, Kenyan Chalipin, you know, like we do the handkerchief. Tainu kin esudim. Well, with that, the yesh befak vekin mekinyan emelu. There those that don't agree that these kinyan work by a guy. Why would loy mitzino kinyan emelu rak be yisrael? So what do we do? When din lechachil vay tzach lach kinyan gomer. So what do we do? So he says later, what do we do min ageno hayoyim? So we do all we could do. We do all the kinyanim. We do all the kinyanim, and we add one more, which is simtusa. Samtusa means a Kenyan that the non-Jews recognize. In other words, <coughs> excuse me, what makes an official sale binding Canadian law. So what we do is uh, we uh, two things. First, we do a handshake. Handshake could be binding. We had uh, Michael here last week. He told us uh, that's a binding thing a few weeks ago. It's a binding uh, thing in Canadian law. But to do a handshake, and on top of all these other ones, which I'll explain how we do, and there's one more thing, which it could be giving money. I don't know how it was Canadian law, but giving money is a uh, is a Kenyan, even if it's not a Kenyan Kesef Medaraisa, but payment, Tchilas Peroyan, if you start paying, Kenyan Kesef is two things. First of all, I'm paying you cash. I, pay, I, pay, I give you money, so I'm coining it. And then there's a payment for what I'm doing. In other words, let's say I want to buy a land. So I don't have to give you the whole $500,000 to be coined the land. I give you a dollar. I give you a dollar and I make a kid in Kesef. I can buy your house with a dollar. I'll owe you the rest of dollars I'll owe it to you. But the, the Kenyan, the acquirement, works with a dollar. Right? So what we do, the guy doesn't pay for the entire worth of the Hamas, which we'll get to in a moment. He doesn't pay for the entire worth. He gives a dollar. He gives a pruta for each, for each amount. Let's say you're selling for 500 people, so you need 500 prutas. 500 prutas is about five bucks. Whatever. Uh, Ten dollars, you know, that covers uh, all the people that you uh, put to per person, and you're kind of the chametz with that. So he, he's paying. But you said earlier, but you're also paying. You're paying. Well, afterwards, we do. Well, then we do something else for the chayes. Yeah, we give him uh, a few bucks for the chayes. Yeah. So he's paying. Well, I'll explain exactly how the how the how the star works in a moment. But we he he. So he's paying. He has to give a pruta for all the chametz. Because you don't have to pay for everything. You can pay for a dollar and be kind of. But in, 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 there's, there's just something called Tchilas Perayin, which means I started paying. It's like a damn, I started paying, and it could be that's a Kenyan in, 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 in the non Jewish law here. So that's also made works. Any Kenyan which is binding in secular law, so any which I don't know if there mm -hmm. is, in other words, it's still in offer, my house. Any offer and acceptance is considered. If you, it's make binding. Offer, if you make an offer and the other guy accepts, right, regardless, binding. it could be money, it could be a handshake, it could right, be dance, right, whatever right. it is. It's binding that you have to sell it, but the question is, did it transfer, Ownership. did it transfer, what's the word? Ownership. Ownership. Title, title transfer, did that happen? 
In other words, did it transfer ownership yet? In other words, you have to keep your word that we know. But the question is, did it transfer uh, things? Yeah, a good example to hell. When you put a down right. payment on it and it make didn't an transfer offer, yet. It didn't transfer to closing, but you've, you've got that commitment. That's correct. We have that commitment. So it has to transfer ownership. That's the difficult part here. Because the, in the non-Jewish law, they may not recognize the whole transfer of ownership. So these are the difficulties that are involved in the Shtar Mechira, and that's why there are people that actually don't sell real chametz. Schnapps, it could be, you could sell it because it uh, could be chametz nuksha. <coughs> could be chametz nuksha, it was never made for, as, a, as a real chametz. But uh, that was a Shalom Shal the Paiskin. But uh, people don't sell it, some people don't sell it because the question is, how do you go about selling it? Mice said a minig is to sell. The minig is to sell chametz, and that's why we, we sell it. But that, that, these are the difficulties involved. Now, I want to point out one more interesting difficulty, which the Bria Locha discusses at length, so very interesting once we got into the concept of Achrayis. Again, when the guy pays for it, he doesn't pay for all the chametz, right? He pays for, he pays for uh, a buck, a dollar, whatever he pays. And, uh, and, and, and the question is, how do we make it that's a real sale? So we do like this. Let me just back up a moment. But there's another issue the Paiskim talk about, Moshe and Shuvah discussed at length, that uh, you can't sell, the Ramam brings down, Halach and Shulchan you can't sell something if you don't know what you're selling. If I come to you and I'm, I'm selling you whatever's in this box, I'm making a Kenyan, you give me a few dollars and I sell it to you, uh, you can't sell, you have to know what you're selling. Especially if it's going to cost, right, it's going to cost the guy. Let's say what's in this box is a diamond ring. He's going to have to pay me uh, $10,000. If in this box is, uh, is uh, a Cheerio, he has to pay me a penny. So you can't sell something. It's not, it's not, it's not considered a sale if you sell something which, which is, which is uh, not, the guy doesn't know what he's getting involved with. He doesn't know what he's, what he's buying. Do both the buyer and the seller have to know what's in the box? Well, the buyer, the, the buyer has to know what he's buying. The seller, he's selling it, but the buyers know what he's buying here. So this is an issue that that, that the that the uh, shkaris deal with. So uh, the the answer that came out from Ber Yitzchak and what's used today is that you write those that come to Rav Yisrael in the morning. We learned this Gemara that you write that k'desayim beit lasa. You write that I'm selling you what's in this box according to the valuation that three people from the street will evaluate. So if you do that, so we're setting a price, we don't know what the price is, but it's agreed upon by both parties that we're going to get someone to evaluate it, and he's binding himself to the evaluation of that person. So that takes care of the problem to some degree. So even though we don't know the value, but since we stipulated in the star that the value will be assessed by, 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 by three people, and that assessment will be binding, so, it's not, so he knows he's getting into that. So that doesn't happen. If someone does. comes into my house yeah. and you're wait, out. Wait, 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 we're not finished yet. So you put that into the star. You write according to the valuation of, of three people. Now, it's very simple. The guy buys the chametz, okay, he buys the chametz for a dollar. And if the middle of Pesach, it says exactly, you know, where the chametz is, which house, uh, you know, it's best if you specify more or less what you have, you know, where the chametz is, you have to know where the chametz is. So the guy decides that, you know, he's a little bit uh, thirsty, he can use a good schnapps. So he looks at your uh, thing, oh, okay, Mendel's house, I'm coming. So he goes, knocks on the door, where's your schnapps? You have to let him in and show him where it is. Show him exactly where it is. He goes and he takes it. Very nice. Then, after Pesach, uh, he has to pay for it. He has to pay for it. Because he's, he, he only paid a dollar so far, but he owes, you the rest, he owes us the rest of the money. So we evaluate it. we got three people to evaluate it, and he has to pay him. That's right. How can you evaluate it? Oh, okay, you have to evaluate it before he drinks it, or, or if you know what it is, you can evaluate it. Yeah. So, so you'd have to evaluate it. How do you know if, in fact, he has not gone to several homes? You, you, you don't know. The person will call you. Believe me, the guy will call the rabbi if someone came to his house and took his home. So, <laughs> so, by the time it's, yeah. it happens, Oh, okay. You have to, you have to do, do that, but uh, the, uh, the that that's what happens. So so Just we evaluate. <laughs> <laughs> so we evaluate. So we evaluate the chametz, and if he takes it, he has to. He'll have to pay for it, right? Now what we do after Pesach is we buy back from him. So when you buy back for him. So we just give him a few bucks back, and he sells it back to us. And now, uh, if nobody took any chametz, so finished. So there's no problem. So that, that's how we do it. Now, the issue here is a very interesting issue. The issue is that 
What happens if a hurricane comes, uh, an uh, earthquake, I don't know what's going on these days, something happens, and your house gets, uh, all your chametz goes down to a fire comes, your chametz is destroyed. Okay? Who's responsible for this chametz? Am I responsible for the chametz? Is the guy responsible for the chametz? Not yours. What? It's not yours. It's his. It's his. Who's responsible for the chametz? Now, technically, we sold it to the guy. We even put him, like we said before, we gave him all the responsibility. The guy's responsible for chametz. Very nice. What we do? You're going to come there, and uh, the, you're going to tell the guy, you know, I had um, uh, three people evaluate my house. I had uh, $10,000 worth of chametz in my house. Pay up. <laughs> what? You get the money out of him? <laughs> so the question becomes, and this is a problem, the... Um, and the Kachim has. There's no the star. There's no contract. There's no star. There's a contract. So you can enforce, yeah, you can enforce it then. <laughs> if it's if you can, anyway. So okay. this is the question. This is the question the Kachim has. That if you don't evaluate, no. If it's evaluated, if it's evaluated, it could be an Hanami. I can enforce it with the star. But if we don't know how much was in there, you know, we don't know how much was in there. So you want to keep the chametz there. Because it's like all insurance. If anyone had to deal with insurance after a fire, go prove how much you had in the house. Uh, very nice. So you're going to prove to the guy what was in the house and how much was there. You know, if it's written in the star exactly how much was there in the house and you agree to it, that's about. But if it wasn't clear, you're going to go prove to him. So you'll never be able to prove it to him. So you'll never get, get the money, right? So what happens is, one second, so what happens is that, um, what happens is, that is it considered that I don't have that I have a Christ in it because I need to keep it around in order to prove to the guy how much it's worth to get the money from it. That's what was Makar Chaim's problem. Be Allah deals with it, and uh, obviously we're saying on uh, the, the sheets that that's not an issue because uh, again we're renting the, pro the part to the guy. We rent that part out to the guy, and we sell it to him. And the fact that uh, you know, the fact that I might not get the money in case it gets lost. Uh, let's say the whole town sold Hamas to Goy. Fifty years later, he discovered he was a really Jew. No, it happened. Wow. Okay, that problem. Jew had a problem. He bought the Hamas. The whole generation lost the Hamas. They bought the problem also because they didn't sell it to a Goy. Yeah. They bought that problem. No, no, I sold it to the Jew. So it's the Jews. It's Hamas Shavu of Pesach. It's Hamas Shavu of Pesach. It's Hamas Pesach. As far as uh, by your eye wasn't like a so I could, I could if I sell my my chametz to a Jew. It's chametz of a pesach. You won't be able to eat it after pesach. Mm -hmm. no no so those are the issues that come up in the shtar mechira. But uh, <laughs> this is the one thing that what? you tell the one thing that always bothered me. What? I, I don't know who we what going we sell to these days. We just show, but they know Not. it's a shtick. They know the whole thing is that they don't know. They okay. don't know how it's bothering Michael yeah. is that yeah. everybody knows it's a shtick. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. They get paid for this. I, but, but they know they're not really buying. I, mean, I don't know what goes on. Like, well, what's the, what's the, okay, okay, okay. 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 So it's a valid question. It's a valid question. It's a little sticks going on. It prevents the arising sticks. I find it. I find it. This is pretty serious, though. This is comics for So, okay, let's just go. Let's just address this issue. So, Mr. Bruce says like this. Mr. Bruce says. That uh, that it's very important that you don't lock off your chametz. You make your chametz available for the guy. Now in the big city, it's maybe it doesn't sound as uh, thing, but you know you, you have a Ron's you. buying your chametz, and we tell him very clearly. We have the, the place where the key is. It's proper to write where your key is, uh -huh. where you can get into the house. If the guy's going away. Uh -huh. How the guy can yeah. get into the house? Yeah. Some uh, some people don't put it on, but the proper thing is to write down where the key's available. And um, so you should rob, the key, you, rob the key. you don't have to give him the key as no, long as it's available. He knows how he could get it. As long as he knows how he could get it, and then uh, the good rob doesn't need to deal with all the keys. Yeah. <laughs> Just get under the mat. You know, <laughs> like everybody else. <laughs> so, so as long as he knows where he could get the keys, so he could get in, and um, and he could get in, he knows he could go get it. Now, the Mishabu deals with that some people used to close off the chametz and afterwards. He writes. Um, Does that mean locked? But they'll lock it up. They will lock it up afterwards. You know, today it doesn't sound like a real issue, but to go back to Europe, where people used to sell their uh, their factories, 
and the, the guy would be very happy to buy the, 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 the you know the uh, beer factory or whatever. So they would put on the lock and key afterwards. You know, after they sold it, they make sure the guy can't get it. So this was a big issue. Is that considered haram as if I never sold? So he brings down the sharetzian that kamuka. Uh, uh, sorry. Yeah, tell me about you. My album fuck can I do that? So so he brings out maybe it's a Roma. Maybe it's a Roma. So maybe who says not a Roma, I sold it. Well, a Roma is what? A Roma means a trickery. I'm not really selling it. So he says, No, at the time I sold it, I have a star, I have a document that's sold. And the fact that afterwards I pulled stick, it wasn't the right thing to do, but uh, but it doesn't negate the Mechira. <coughs> Others say uh, maybe not, maybe it doesn't negate the Mechira. Lumaisa, what we're saying is like this. That the Ikka Mechira to a guy is works al stas makna. I have in mind to sell it. Right? We're saying about two things. First of all, there's a document, and the Mechira took place. So if the Mechira takes place, you could think that it's, a, it's, a, it's not a real sale, but uh, it's a real sale. I mean, if I sell him something with a legal document, and the guy thinks it's not a real sale, <coughs> tough. He bought it. He has, he, has, he has a sale. And two, since it's a Jew selling it to a non Jew, so the Ikka Mechira works with Dasa Heres Machina. In other words, in, in, in halacha, there's two parts to a Kenyan. My mind to sell it, and his mind to acquire it. For example, I could sell to a cotton, certain Kenyan, to a, to, a, to a younger child I could sell. Right? Let's say like a sukkis, I give my lulav to the child, and he can't give it back to me. So the reason why I could give it to him, because he has dasa cheres makna. Since I have in mind to sell it, that could push it into his domain if he makes a Kenyan, even though his mind is not fully developed to make a Kenyan. So the same concept works by a guy that I, even if he doesn't really fully understand, which we explain it to him. The proper way is to go through the guy and explain every step of the way what we do, but we explain it to him. So, but he could be kind of, since I don't want to be over by your by your No way. I don't want to be over. It's not worth it for a few bucks that I should get cars. Uh, it's not, I'm not interested in it. So I sell it. I sell it. And since I sell it, I really want to sell it. So that's the Charis Machina is enough to, the guy made a proper Kenyan that he's kind of, even though he may not fully comprehend the whole, uh, the whole uh, logic that's going on. Explain to the guy. Explain what, 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 what does it tell? I mean, how we sit down with him. We go through the style one by one. I go, we go over to him now. First thing we do, first thing we do is. Do you have a copy of uh, Then I'll go quickly because I want a lot of start for the other year. But the first thing we do is we uh, the the rav the rav has has property himself. Let's say one year I was moving, so I had all my stuff in a moving truck. So how do I sell? Uh, how do I sell? What karka do you have? What land do you have? There's many people that don't have land. How do you sell it? Agav karka. How do you sell it with a, with a schemers? What, what do I rent? Uh, you know, it's in the truck. Rent the truck. Yeah, they come out at the truck. <laughs> that works. That's not, not property. Yeah, yeah. It's not, uh, it's not, yeah so not, what we not do not is, the first thing we do is the, the Rav himself has property, and he sells the guy or rents the guy a piece of his property. And he sells and, and, and he sells all the chametz out of that piece of carpet, uh, property. So that's the first way you do it. So he gives the rav a puta, and he buys a piece of the karka, or he, he rents a piece of the karka. And with that, he could be kind of some rav on him, even take the rav to the house, and he can make chazak, he can bang a nail on the basement wall by the uh, boiler room, and uh, require a piece of that. So you get besides kidney kesef, you get another kidney for, for karka kesef really works. So he just takes a puta, and he buys a piece of the land that the rubs him, and out of that, he gets a little hummus. So they have one kidney. Then, you go, and he buys all the um, property, he, he, he buys all the property of the, uh, rents all the space of uh, all the places where the hummus is on. And he can be kind of a kaka, he can be kind of a chutzin, and then he buys all the hummus itself with kesef, he buys with kesef. And then we do a handshake, and we do, we do these things over... You can imagine, we do it over three times. One for the Rav, one for the, uh, the Kark of everybody, and then you do it with uh, uh, by buying with Ketzel with everybody. You do your handshake, you do Kenyan Sudra, you know, you make a Kenyan Sudra on it. We do all the Kenyanim on the uh, uh, properly done. should be done three times over uh, on these ways. And then you cut it, and uh, you pay a little bit for each one, and we, we could assign by cross and decide how much is, you know, we evaluate if it's needed to be evaluated. Uh, and that's, that's basically how you sell the chametz in a nutshell. I mean, go through it but slowly so, and explain it. I don't it want mine back again. I sold it to you. I don't want it back. Can mm -hmm. I force it? Is he forced in to, buy, to pay for the value of it? Technically, yeah. Technically, um, if you don't if you don't want it back, 
Uh, so before the, before the Rav Degoy at the end of Pesach makes the exchange back, I can say the Degoy, I don't want it back. They say I don't want it back. So, yeah. so, yeah. Happy to do we don't sell it to trouble. No, no, he's not about the value, the valuation. He has to be a value. In the star that at the end of Pesach he has to come up with the money, if he doesn't, it reverts automatically back. No, we don't want that to happen because then you get, you get, you get messed up with your mechira. Here, says at the end. Says the Chavur, the Chavur, the Chavur, the Chavur. Here's what Shmuel told me: clear mechira. Okay, something else. Come, let's go. I know Shmuel. Can I go to Shmuel? We're to watch the mechira. Call me the Nish Tovus. We're going to be shushed as soon as Asa calls out. It's John. Does he have a certain amount of time? To doesn't say it in the star. But does, does he have a certain amount of time to pay? Like if, if, if no one wants to back, he has to pay. How much does a guy make out of all this? Six bucks. <laughs> Only six in an hour. No, it's just a, how, there has to be a certain time period that the guy has to. You know, a year later you can say I still haven't paid. Like no, no, we buy it back. Why do you have to pay sir? But the Rav buys it back after Pesach. He takes a dollar and he gives it to the guy. We don't have to do all the Kenyan to buy okay. it back. <laughs> we just see one king. This person to buy this it back. Person have an agreement. Right These two people have an agreement. Yeah. Yeah. Something happens to the Rav. But the, 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 the Kenyans... The, 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 the Someone else will buy it back. Someone else will buy it back. Anybody <laughs> can buy it back. Anybody can buy Chomz. To buy it back for, for a Beshlichus for everybody else. But you can't put it in there that you're buying it back. No, we don't put it in and we buy it back. So you don't put it in that we buy it back. But stuff comes Do you stuff actually have to meet with the goy? Of course. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Let's, say he, let's say he left the country for a couple of weeks. When? After before. After before. Don't get a guy that's going to run away. It's going on the whole way. You can't control it. But we can't control it. Well, no, let's say he decides to go out of town. What if the guy dies? He dies. Oh, if he dies, yeah. What he 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 you see, eating his chametz is, is maybe stealing, but you're not over. He's not right, over. Right, 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 right. Not over if you eat his chametz after Pesach. Maybe stealing from him. So call him a phone call wherever he is on a cell phone and tell him we need to eat the chametz. Uh, can we eat it? But, can but we eat your chametz to give us permission and we'll buy it back as but, soon as we come back. But what's interesting to me is that stuff uh, It looks like for when a guy buys something, he doesn't need dollars, which is really very. He surprising. knows what's going on. He knows. What, he, we explained to him the process. We met with him. We met with him. We met with him. We explained to him the process. We met with him. We got to buy it back. But, but, but the guy says, I'm not really interested in all this stuff. But don't worry, we just, we need this done because, uh, you know. He's interested. He's really interested in buying my Cheerios. He is that. interested because we, we give him some more money. We give him a little bit more. We, you know, we pay him off. So he's not really doing it for the Chavitz. He's here. And there's a disincentive for him to keep the Chavitz. There is a disincentive for him to keep the Chavitz because we, 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 he has to pay for it. Right, that's why we do it. He has to pay for it. Which really, when you think about it, yeah. it will be a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a disincentive.